Hey everybody, Marion, the Inappropriate Artist here, and welcome to my new space for painting. You may wonder what I'm doing. I am dismantling. I did a test, doing my best to try to pre-stretch paper. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, I tried a couple of different things. I cannot use a staple gun. Um, I also don't want to staple into this table. Um, I don't want all those holes and the little bumps. Anyway. Yeah, I know. I'm going to do a lot of I'm going to do a lot. But yeah, so if I did this, it would me just take a look. So what's happening here? I am doing my best to use this. 18 by 24 cans on paper that a friend gifted me at its full size. Um, yeah. And the trouble I am running into is the dreaded cockle. <laughs> So I will show you Whoops. my first piece of paper came out like this. <laughs> this, that was because I totally forgot about the edges needing to absorb the moisture and I taped it down and just pre-wet it and let it dry. Um, and that's what happened. So this one I wet it untaped and I saturated it as best as I could and it came out better. But here's the thing. I don't have a tray and that's really what I need um, to be able to submerge the entire piece of paper. But also, it really needs to be properly stretched. And all of the advice that I get, and I know this, I just have been trying to find a workaround, and there isn't one, is that you need to staple and tape both. And um, I don't have a stretcher bar or something that I'm willing to staple into to stretch this. But also, my hands can no longer squeeze a sta staple gun, and I don't have a pneumatic staple gun. And those pneumatic staple guns, by the way, they always leave like a little bit sticking out. Uh, they don't go all the way in, and you got to hammer them all in. It's a lot of stuff that you got to do that my wrists can no longer take, and my hands can no longer take. So... And some of you, that's that's what you're wondering is, why did I stop and stand still? Um, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but that this is a part of it. Um, so right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a fresh piece of paper and tape it down. So I realized, like, my original thought with this paper was, oh my gosh, I have 30 sheets. I can do 30 states. I have 29 states to do. Um, that perfect. Well, it is what fed the idea and the concept for the show that I am prepping and practicing for. So these paintings that I'm doing now are all what I am considering to be studies to a certain extent. I am creating finished paintings, but the idea is that I my finished, finished ones, the ones that are going to be for the higher price for the show are going to be on 300 pound arches paper. Why? Because of this whole cockle thing. I like painting in gouache and oh, this isn't gonna yeah, well. um I like painting in gouache and I really, you know, I thought maybe I would try painting in oil 
for this. Um, oh, oopies. A little bit crooked there. Good enough. I did a lot of research on the whole subject of the cockle. And since I do not have access to a press, um, and, you know, it would be pretty presumptuous for me to assume that I would have enough table sp space to be able to press this many pieces. Um, not to mention, the art just lets me, uh, that 300 pound paper lets me wet and re-wet and re-wet over and over again without cockling and I can scrub the paper without it shedding um, or I can at least do it for a really long time before it sheds let's say that I am you might not be able to tell I can sort of see the shadow of the edge of the paper through the tape and I eyeball it um, from my years of being a picture framer. Certain, certain little things pay off um, and others don't. So Okay, now that I've got this all taped down, and hopefully I haven't completely killed myself on my left hand, um, I'm going to be preparing my palette. So, I don't know if you saw what just happened there. Um, as I went to move the table, my wrist popped out and back in again and it's incredibly something inside there did uh so and it's a it's like i have been experiencing dislocating of my joints regularly um and so i've been limiting my actions to prevent that from happening um, because I know the more often it happens, this is the harder it is to repair. <clears throat> um, this is something I have realized, like, as I went through my medical history and all of my memories, and, um, that I have been dealing with for my whole life. Um, and... It's getting worse. I knew it was. I was blaming it on carpal tunnel. Because I figured picture framing. And I do think picture framing definitely um, moved things, moved the deterioration of certain joints more than others, you know, um, further along, right? Um Let's see. Hold. Let's hold that thought for a second. I am. I need cerulean blue and ultramarine. I'm going to be using this blending medium in hopes of one slowing my drying process just a little bit. Also, so that I can use less water in hopes that I'll have less of a problem with cockling. Cross your fingers that this hopes. This is a little semi-solution that I've come up with. This is all I have for blending medium. It's just a little bit in here. Um, this is all of my cerulean blue. 
So, and then this is, and then this is all of my alizarin crimson. I shouldn't need too, too much to have to make browns. I don't want to use the burnt umber. I much prefer mixing my own browns. Um, I have my anthraquinone blue, which I think is going to help me stretch things. Um, it's nice. I'm doing a Connecticut beach line. So I'm going to be painting Todd's point. Yay! I know there's a whole bunch of you who are really excited that it's going to be this big. It may not work. This is a first time out for me doing this with this uh, at this scale like this. I've done two bigger ones, but I had more pigment than I do right now. That was two some, and that was two years ago. And I remembered thinking there's got to be a way for me to use less pigment than what just happened here. And so this is now only my third time painting large. And the other one was a paper that I was more familiar with because it was a Arches. This is Canson. I have been working on it in a small scale. Anyway, let's see how I can, if I can pull this off. My anthraquinone blue watercolor. This is my only watercolor, but as soon as you mix it in with any of these gouaches, it becomes gouache. Um, but it's got a great staining power, which also I have to be aware of. It makes a beautiful purple when I mix it, and that's the thing. Like, I need to make my purple. I don't know. And the reason I want I want to use this palette, I wanted to paint, I wanted to make a fresh palette one for these larger paintings. And two, because I may need to use this. And also this one fits this just fits but it fits. So I can do certain blends in these larger, three larger wells that I have. I also have all this space. Then, plus I have the lid that I will use as well for mixing up. When I, when I use these big fat brushes, I need bigger mixing space. Um, you know, I have my misting bottle. Oh, I guess I just need to get started. So here I go. All right, so my physical condition uh, has worsened partly because of living in the van because I am, um, I, I lost too much weight. I didn't have a refrigerator. I had a cooler. Keeping up with the ice, having to always constantly move everything out to, um, I, I wish I had a crimper. I don't have a crimper. Um, so sitting still was going to be necessary. I thought I was going to be staying in Clarksdale, Mississippi. I'm very glad that that didn't work out in the end. Uh, I'm familiar here. I know where I am. I know this space. I love the person I'm renting from. She recently um, fell ill. So I, uh, I don't feel like it's my place to share personal family information. So I'm not going to here. Um, but my being here brings the family, I've been told, peace of mind. Um, but I still have to contribute. I have to pay my rent. I'm hoping as I paint this, somebody's going to want to buy it. So there you go. I don't want a handout. I want people to buy the artwork so I can feed myself and pay my rent. That's what I want. Anyway. So let's do this. 
I love these new brushes. Oh, here we go. All right, so. Oh, these are my new Sarah Burns Studio from Craftmo brushes. Look at this beautiful box. Oh, now, these, these ones with the teal handles are hers. Oh, they're so beautiful. I know. <laughs> but if you ever saw me with buttery wood frames. Okay. I know. That's, this is my ASMR. All right. Don't judge me. Okay. So Sarah Burns made, took a few years, you know, she spent time and she, like me, likes to dive down the rabbit hole of things. Right. So her dive and I trust it. And I've been watching her videos for five years now, six years, probably she started seven years ago or <clears throat> when did she start? So I think she started in 2015. Um, I started in 2017. So I started watching her videos. She was in, she was teaching herself. Uh, she's self-taught. She also started as a photographer. She was a wedding photographer, nature photographer, wedding photographer. And um, anyway, she deep dived down her rabbit hole of, <clears throat> wanting to understand gouache better is how it started, right? Like, she wanted to understand the pigments, the light fastness, which ones to use, which ones to stay away from, because there are some pigments that are naturally fugitive. She did all the research. Um, and I got to tell you, I really freaking love the brushes. It's really made me... Not like any of my other brushes. Not totally true. I mean, I still love my silver black velvet. Um, for what they do. Because, like, I love the way this, you know, how soft these are. And the shapes of them. What I love, these also are soft. But they're sturdy. So, and they hold the pigment well. It doesn't just bleh, throw up all over the paper as soon as you touch it, like with these. But watercolor brushes are supposed to do that. These are specifically designed for painting with gouache. So being able to, to wet it and hold water so you can paint translucent like a watercolor or to be able to blot the back end of the brush to get the water out and leave all the pigment up at the front of the brush without sucking out all the pigment. That's a big deal. So I'll hopefully think to demonstrate that while I use these. Um, anyway, so I'm setting up for this. Um, I'm scared to death because I am not affluent and I do rely on all of you. And these are my pigments. So this is what I got. Um, all right, I am going to be putting just a little bit of this blending medium in with each of these um, to try to thin them a little bit. I'll be um, not too much, but just a little because I want it to go further and then I'll, and then I'll use water in the well. Um, my zinc and my permanent white. I'm going to need more zinc white sooner than later. This is my cerulean. Yeah. Okay, so sitting still. Um, I'm slowly gaining weight. 
Um, as we speak, I have avoided breakfast and I need to get to it. So I'm not going to get, probably should stop doing this right now and eat breakfast. I am back in here in hopes that I can get something accomplished now that I've eaten. I put some food in my belly. I'm going to fill my palate. So let's get started here. Uh, I want just a little bit of red here. And then over here, I'm going to mix my purple. So, all right, so I am here in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. I don't know what I'm saying, but I do need to keep putting paint in here. So, mmm. All right. Well, I was going to try to give you an update while I was doing this, but I seem to be struggling. This is a watercolor blue. Oh, fuck. I made a mistake. I put the wrong blue in. <laughs> My fault. Now, these wells are massive, and I don't really need such big wells. But I do feel like I end up wasting a lot of pigment. So, I am taking this time in hopes that, one... I have some time to do some healing of my body. Um, but to also develop a residency here in New Mexico. Um, I am hopefully going to find someone that I can work with who can help me get assistance. It's not an easy thing for me. So I have been somewhat successfully, you know, making it through. You know, I've been getting by um, through contributions from all of you. But now I definitely have to make a rent check every single month. My phone bill can't continue to be late. I just, the stress of it is getting to the point where pretty much I'm on a daily basis fighting nausea that, yeah. So, and I physically am struggling. And so getting a typical job is not something uh, that I can do. Uh, cerulean blue. <laughs> All right. So you need to be over here. Oh, I really hope I have enough of this. Ouch. Okay. I know. I, I, if you guys are watching me fumble with this, it's because I really... God. Because this hurts. Like... Uh. Yeah. So anyway. Between that... Uh... And I, you know, I 
I'm struggling to share because there is a lot of judgment out there that is that I understand because I used to be of the same mind in that I agreed. I thought also that, um, all right, I'm going to put another little bit of this green. I want to make it green. So let's put you here. That is nice and summery and bright. Um, So, I, just a little bit of blue, I want it to be um, more yellow if I can keep it that way. Um, what else do I need to blend? So I've got a purple. Um, I'm now also going to want... Oh, crap. Um, there we go. Good. So, as you can see, I mean, I haven't played guitar in a month. Um... And that's because my hands really can't do it. They're, I'm saving my strength. Um, I want, I need to be able to paint. And do some of the chores that I signed up here to do um, in lieu of a lower rent. So, there is that. So, what am I putting out? If you're at, if you're curious, this was a cadmium free yellow. This was cadmium free yellow light. This was permanent yellow. This was permanent alizarin crimson. This was ultramarine blue. This was anthraquinone blue. I made a purple out of the anthraquinone and alizarin and as you saw a tiny little bit of the ultramarine because <laughs> I was not paying attention. Uh, I put a little ultramarine in with some of this cadmium yellow light because I'm going to make a green. And then this is my black of choice and I put oh a little cerulean blue over here. This black is not really a black. Well, it is. It's a single pigment. It's called perline black. It's very green. As ivory black is blue, perline black is green. Okay. So, I'm not over as you see, filling my wells. Um, I am going to put some of this over here in the center well. Oops. So little of this left. I have to be careful. All right. I have put out my colors. Ooh. Uh, zinc white. Mm, there you go. Come on. And. A little 
permanent way. You may wonder how I can really tell the difference is the zinc white is, is much more, um, thick, uh, the permanent white, there's a lot, seems to be a lot of blending medium in it. So I'm going to clean my brat knife. Now you see I'm just putting a little bit, scooping up a tiny little bit on the tip of this and dripping it in here. I don't want it to be too thin, but I also do not want it drying out while I work. I wanted to work on larger works. You guys have all heard me say that before. So, you know, after the power station got stolen, I had to really rethink everything. I knew that I needed a refrigerator to help me eat better. Um, there we go. But you see what I mean? Like, it's too big a well. I don't know if you can see. Anyway. It is what it is. Now let's put in a little bit of that with this. Now I did put extra blending medium in the zinc white because I want it to be a little thinner. I'm using it for blending. Um, this cerulean blue, I want a little thicker, so I put a little less. So really, you just get used to doing what you're doing. This is a, a Grumbacher, or no, sorry, excuse me, Winsor Newton watercolor blending medium that I am using here. I've got chunks. What happens to cerulean blue? It seems to be common across the board with the pigments that I have worked with anyway. And uh, Sarah Burns, she does all these experiments. And I've listened carefully because she really takes the time to do good experiments with her pigments to find out which ones are the ones she really wants to be using. She has a lot of the same preferences I do. Um, with my history as a preservation picture framer, right? It matters to me. That's why I tested those couple pieces of paper to see what my best results would be. All right, let's do this. And this already... This yellow already started to dry out. Blending it with the ultramarine blue is going to help. But I should have added a drop. And there is still time. I don't want to put more than two drops in. So you can really control your consistency. Um, I do kind of want this to be a little bit thicker. However, for right now, this is going to work. See, already I want to dip into here. The 
See, these wells are really too big for this blending. Anyway, I just want to get a basic mix in. All right. This is a good middle green. I usually do most of my blending as I go, but because this painting is so large, I feel the need to pre-prep my pigments. That was how I felt I sort of kind of didn't quite get it the last time around. So I'm going to add a couple of drops of this medium over here and a couple over here in the red. See how I have to saw that off? <laughs> but as soon as it starts touching the blending medium, it starts to work out. I'm doing this with my palette knife because all of that pigment will get wasted and sucked up into the brush and end up in my wastewater instead. And I don't want that. So on my wish list, <laughs> I do have a palette, but I want a palette to stay in, um, on my kitchen table. And so I have a palette with smaller wells. Anyway, but I have to make do with what I have here. This is big. I kept big mixing space with this one. That's why I did it. All right. I th think everyone else is okay. All right. Uh, now for the big deep breath. All right. So this one we're going to do, I'm going to turn that. Start with this guy. So I can wet my paper. Yeah, so back to the telling you what's going on. Uh, so I'm splitting my time between preparing this place where I'm renting um, for other units to be rentable. Um, one of the spaces is for me to move into. Um, it's much smaller than the one I'm in, but since I have use of this space, right, I'm okay with that. And I was living in a van, for God's sake. Okay. So, uh, uh water. All right. This is kind of scary. Um, I'm going to go about this a little bit differently than I've been doing this. Um, and I want, fuck, this leaves streaks. But this brush is so small. Sarah, we need one a one and a half inch. <laughs> like you need anything else on your plate. I know, but that's my request. A good one and a half inch and a good big wash brush that's not so sharp that it like is going to be streaky for a two inch wash and a one and a half inch. Because I want a one and a half inch like this so that I can do these bigger skies. Thanks. That's my special request. Sorry. No, not sorry. Uh, you don't get what you don't ask for. Don't get what you don't ask for. All right. 
Here we go. And pull my image up so I see what direction I want my light in. I have painted this image before. I did it small. Um, I'll throw that image up here. And I need to now put my glasses down so I can see. All right. So I see already I'm going to want some cerulean, some of this anthraquinone blue, just a teeny little bit of it because it's really strong. And the ultramarine. This is a dawn, so morning light. The sun just cresting over the horizon and shining on the beach. So we're going to have lots of blue and then it's going to come down. See, I almost wonder if it's going to be too much sky. I might make a little bit more atmosphere up here, but there's definitely like a pinky purpley cloud line along the horizon and it gets like peachy golden over here my horizon line is here and I have a, uh, we have marshy grasses in the shallows here and then the beach comes in here all the way to here I did not bring a pencil because I am gonna be Bold. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do before I wet my paper, no, yeah, well, before I wet my paper, I'm going to get a brush ready. Make sure I get some of this purple on my brush. Yeah, and I'm using this one. It's too small. I've already decided. It's too small. I want no. I want this one. There we go. And yes, I am diluting because I am drawing a light sketch, a really light sketch because I don't want it to affect my sky. So I'm actually going to do this horizon. So what do I have in the distance? This is Greenwich Point or Todd's Point to those of us who are locals. And we have Long Island hanging out in the distance. So I'm gonna let that be a faded line there to show me my horizon. And I'm using this purpley washy color because I'm going to have a wonderful um, purpley washy cloud in here. Um, it fades. So now let's get a little more water on our brush. Now you see what I'm doing? I because I'm I'm concerned that too much water on the paper is going to really make it tricky for me to um all right a little more water than that i'm being very very there we go all right and this is just a little bottom sketch 
underneath. Let's see how I can move that pigment around. Woo, I love me some gouache. And this is just, I'm doing a very lightly wet brush on dry paper. This is a cloud line that is just above my horizon. It's not going to be that quite that linear, um, but I just needed to get something down there. All right, there's going to be trees over here. I have actually, yeah. So my shoreline comes from here and comes up and kind of stops. So you see me drawing slightly imaginary lines. This is all just also with a really, now I'm going to put a little bit of paint in here. That's a lot of paint. So we're going to make it more like here. There we go. And then it's going to come straight across like here. Grasses. And we have, and then the shade, the beach sand comes here. Okay, and then we have a up and stone wall here. Okay. Uh, there's going to be trees out on the end here. There's going to be a tree here. I'm going to just mark it lightly. Going to have, right, because we've got dark shrubbery, a big tree coming down here. Another one poking out here. And then we've got one right. That's a big fat trunk for, for a tree that's so far away. But I'm just marking the spot. All right. Oh, my God. I want to die. This is terrifying. Okay, now you may be looking like, Marion, that the sky is so far away from you. It does look that way. <laughs> Aha! So now, um, okay. Okay. Now here's the part where I get a little uh, nervous. Oh, I do have cards. Um, I'm gonna whew, carefully wet this part of the paper and just get painting and hope for the best and hope that I don't end up with too many valleys. Um, already I can see that I am gonna have an issue. So I tilted the table a little bit this way, quite a bit actually. I see my water running, that's a good thing. 
Um, I am putting this brush down as much as I want to use it. I'm going to use this one. So I've got water. And I don't want too much on my brush because I don't want it to be... But I do need more. See, this is kind of scary. Ah, it was a lot that went down right there. See, what happens is it kind of bubbles up in those spots and I don't like it. So actually there's some nice voids in here and I think I'm going to leave them uh, because so now I'm going to take a little cerulean blue. I've got um, got a little bit of water in that well which is good. We're going to grab some of this ultramarine. Whoops, I need more than that. Hey, come here. Um, more cerulean. A little bit of you. There we go. More cerulean. Now this, I know all of my blues are going to be really similar because um, my water is reflecting the sky, right? So, all right, here we go. Oh, say a prayer for me now. I see the valleys. I do not like them. I want you to be a little bit deeper. Now I'm going to take some of this blending medium. Okay. This is where. This is going to help me, I hope. Oh, you see the rippling of the paper. This is what I'm talking about. And that's what pre-stretching is all about. You know, that's why many artists pre-stretch their paper. That's why I really do want to work on a heavier grade paper. A little more blending medium. Now, I don't think you can tell, but I can tell. Now, there are definitely, you see those areas where it's not taking the blue? I'm okay with that because I think I'm going to let those be clouds. All right, so now I've got a basic. Oh, come on. Coating on here. A little bit of water, a little bit more of you. I want more cerulean blue on my, oh God, I knew I'm gonna just blow it with this. A little more ultramarine, a little more blending medium. brush. I'm going to wipe this off here. Okay. Now, I am going to use this brush because oh, I just think I have better control. So I'm going to grab the zinc white. 
right? The zinc white, I'm blending it into this water. And making a wash almost out of it. And now we're just going to go right in on top of here. Oh, Sarah, oh my God. What a difference a brush makes, people. I cannot tell you how much better this feels. I really cannot express any more than I am right now just how awesome this feels. Wow. All right, so a little bit of blue. Water. So it's hard for me to see exactly what's going on here. I'm, I am struggling. This is a very big piece of paper. And I am sort of on top of it and I'm working with white. And see, I just added a little bit of blue into that. I gotta wet the paper before it spritz. Now, that really just did a number on myself uh, with all that pigment that's already down here. So I've got to move fast to blend and I'm not going to get a good blend. I need a bigger brush. All right. I'm taking a deep breath. I am about to take all of this zinc white, put it right here. We're going to grab this blending medium and come right in here. I am sweating like you would not believe right now. Now you saw I just picked up the pure blending medium to put down on here. It's because I'm realizing like that's going to help make this move a little bit smoother across the paper, I think. My wash that I got going on here. So I don't know if you can tell what's happening. There was a whole bunch of little spots. And I am slowly blending them away. It's taking time because this is a very small brush. And I just used a whole lot of blending medium to make this happen. Mm. 
And now I'm just going to go straight in with water to thin it. I know I've already got these peaks and valleys and I'm going to have to contend with them. But you can see how now just adding the water to the blending medium is helping to make it travel. I got to be careful not to pull my color up too much though in the sky. All right, so that's helping. Now I'm going to mix in, I'm going to come right in here. Mm, I need more blending medium already, don't I? Shit. Mm. Uh. Well, if I can get the sky finished today, whoa. if I can get the sky finished, I'm just going to throw this right here. Now, some water and I should bring this over here so that it doesn't accidentally drip um, all right then zinc and blending Now, you can see what's happening. This is what I call atmosphere. <laughs> and, you know, it's the saving grace of this pigment, I think. Honestly. Um, I'm adding more ultramarine. And a little bit of this. Over here, we're going to grab some more of this because, All right, and now I'm going to come right in here to where the cerulean blue was, right? Just a little bit of blending medium. And we're going to darken up this top line. Because this is the beginning of the day. All right, there we go. All right. Now over here, I'm going to have it be a tiny bit lighter as I move through. But see now, like how that's... Woo! So now I can come in here see now where if I was working with transparent watercolor I'd be having a heart attack right now with what this paper is doing but because I made the decision I made I feel good. This is where the sun is coming from. So I want you to be. Woo! Nice. And I can feather this beautiful brush, Sarah. Oh my God. Sarah Burns, you're a freaking genius. And I love you. I think you're amazing. I have. Oh. You are brilliant woman. 
You know, and I honestly, like, I know people get really weirded out about age differences and all sorts of stuff. She's probably 10, 15, she's probably 15, maybe years my junior. But, you know, I think I said it before. She's willing to go down the rabbit hole. And, you know... We need people who are willing to do the research so that we know how our medium can work better. You know, I'm just... Oh, such a fan! Such a fan! And oh my God, so glad that went that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we now know Marion needs to put this up here, not down where it was. Um, so I just put a little bit of water on my brush, a little more blending medium. I'm going to go into this white again. So I should show you a close-up of this, but I've got to kind of move quickly. Um, gonna see if I can when I get to a certain point show you what it is I am doing and what I'm working with and I don't mind a little bit of spottiness coming through it's very natural actually to the paper as well as to atmosphere and environment and the way light filters um There we go. That's pretty. That is very pretty. So I'm allowing some of that deeper, darker color to weave in here. So I want to show a little variation in the sky. Wheels in the sky keep on turning. I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. Well, that was terrible. Sorry, everybody. Uh. Oh, it's better. All right. So. All right, now let me grab the camera and show you. So that's the spotting I'm talking about when I sprayed with the water bottle, right? But it's not a bad thing because it created this cool texture. So as I go through, these are areas that I can turn in an accent with brighter whites to make clouds out of. But you see how nicely it's blending together? Pretty. I'm very happy. I need more white. Now I'm going to switch into a, a permanent white because I want the white to dominate the color and I'm going to start down in here and work my way up into the sky. I'm going to start by going over my purple. Right, and I drew these like land lines here because I'm not going to cover those areas with the permanent white. I don't want that underneath there. All right, and I'm going to take this. I'm just going to go right over in here. So I don't want to add any more um, clean water. That's why these should be over here. Now you see what's happening, or maybe you can't. I'm blending the 
bottom. That purple that was underneath there. Because these are like stormy-ish clouds down here. All right. Um, but still, I want... Uh-oh. Okay. Well, a little pink is not a bad thing at this point. All right. Woo! Now this area, I want to be quite white so I'm going to totally rinse off my brush I'm going to go in here with just this permanent white and my own fresh little dab of this without any other color in it Ooh, that was a lot. Oh, that was a lot. All right. I'll add some more. So I'm starting in the middle. And really... You, it's hard. It's even if I had the camera up close on this, it would be very hard for you to see what I'm doing. I'm saturating this inner stripe with my permanent white. I got a big blobby. I just want to be careful that it's not too big a blob. Now, the nice thing about this blending medium is that it is slower drying. I mean, adding water to it does sort of speed it up a little bit. But um, I didn't really want to do that. All right. So, what I don't think you can see happening yet, but it's starting to create this wonderful, like, haze. little bit of water. There we go. Well, you know, and that's the nice thing is like, you know, I can really use a couple of different ways of working with this medium. Um, to achieve different, oh fuck, to achieve different effects. Well, that's a lot on there. Uh, well, we have a lot of light coming from over here. Nice. I'm going to let that sort of dry up a little. I'm going to get to work up here now a little more. Uh, now I can go back to using this blending medium over on this side because it's okay to have a little blue in here. So this stuff has dried a little bit over here. So basically I'm going to sort of be reactivating a little bit.
So what I'm doing is feathering, right? And that is one of the things I'm absolutely loving about this freaking brush. I know. Y'all are going to be so sick of hearing about this. But I got to tell you. Anybody who works with gouache, I am going to say, get yourself a set of these brushes. Craftmo is selling them. They're designed by Sarah Burns Studio. Craftmo. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, yeah, I mean... I am, I'm already in a place where I'm like begging for her to make a bigger set. If you heard me earlier, you know, I'd like to see more. So I'm going to throw down some more white. And now, like, when I throw in the white, I'm going to let it be a little chunky and then blend it. Because those are highlights. Hello. Hello, light. Hello, light. Hello, light. For me. slow down and pay a little bit closer attention all right mm -hmm. I do not have enough squeeze in my fingers at the moment. Mm. So, as you can see, I've gone through quite a bit of pigment just to get this guy, and I haven't even reached the water yet. So, you can see that I've made blended colors. 
colors. But you also see that I really like to blend on the paper. Um, it's been, I find it, it's more spontaneous. It allows me so much more freedom. Oh, I think that's a spot I'm going to have to contend with. All right. Maybe a little bit of you will help. No? All right, stop. Stop fiddling so much. All right. Well, what, what's happening over in that spot is that I've overworked it a little, so... I feel like there's still some blending I could be doing here, but like, um, I feel like I need to do a little more blending in this. So I'm almost staggering the feathering. I want it to be lighter over here. I'm going to throw maybe a little bit of sunlight in there when the time comes. Um, but right now I got to let all this dry. So gonna do that. I am gonna close this up so it doesn't get all wonky. I have no idea what I talked to you guys about today. If anything helpful. Um, I am, I mean, I'm feeling a little like, woo, you know, cause this is all I had to make a really big adjustment. I was not expecting to stop traveling. I am still a little bit like, ah, oh, what am I doing? But that's okay. You know, and I, I realize me, my process, as annoying as it is, because it's kind of annoying. It's annoying to me. It's a lot of adjustment and it's like freak out and then slowly how do I fit this into my life and then I slowly start fitting things into my life and it takes me time I may not be running a race but I do feel you know um, uh, pressure to accomplish I need to pay for this life of mine that I'm living um, and I don't you know, there are those out there, I'm pretty sure, who think that this is a frivolous life for me. I can't convince them otherwise. I, I, I just, I can't even take the energy and time. The things I'm dealing with are not excuses. They're just what is. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm accepting because I have no other choice. But this is, you know, how this brain is functioning. It's been severely traumatized in my life. And I need to remember that. Um, and be patient with myself. But I get hungry. And I need to pay for things. Like my rent paint and paper um so yeah so if you want to keep me working and doing this oh don't lean um i would love it if you would check out the links below i have a patreon the patreon is hopefully going to grow to a point where it funds me in this project 
my goal is to paint all 50 states um, and write a book. So I know that I'm going to be painting the 50 states before I finish the book for sure. Because uh, I'm going to need those images for the book. But uh, yeah, I this is I'm creating the content for the book as we speak and inviting you to help me achieve it and fund the project. If you would like to purchase a painting, a future painting, email me. My email is below. And by that I mean like, you can take a look at this knowing this is Greenwich Point. And although I wouldn't hold anyone to this one because this is like trial and error because it's a new paper or a new size. But if you like how this is coming out as I'm finishing it and you want it, because I'm not finishing it in this video, it'll be the next one. Um, I hope. <laughs> but as, you know, if you like it and you want it, message me. Um, I would ask for a deposit, so a 50% down, and then you can pay the 50% when it's finished and I'm ready to ship it. Um, but that's how we can work it. So she begins the early morning light and, uh, woo! I got that first layer down and now I'm just going to let it dry and then I'll come back and work. I'll have a little more to do in the sky for sure, but, uh, for now I just want to let it dry and then I'll start working in the mid ground. Woo. So thanks everybody for joining me for this update today. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm working right now. I'm in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. I plan to be here for a year. I do need to pay for it. Um, so I'm working on these. These guys at this size are going to be $1,400 each. So if you would like one, it really goes a long way for me buying the heavier 300 pound paper for finished larger paintings and also more pigment because I used a lot just to do this. So you can see how much I'm going to be going through. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Links are below. Patreon. If you want to buy prints, can't afford an original, you want to buy prints, I have a Fine Art America page. That link is also below. By the way, my little biddies are $55. So that kind of gives you an idea. So anywhere from $55 to $1,400 is what you can spend on my art. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell if you want to see part two.